It is April 29th of 2024, and on April 23rd of 2024, True Nass Scale Dragonfish 24.04 was released. I think I got all those numbers right. Now, I did not do a video the day it came out because a lot of you may have already noticed that there's updates in your system, but I wanted to run through and update five production systems, use them, including the one that records this video that also replicates to another system that's all running the latest version and make sure all of those functions worked as well as the apps that I use. Now, I do know as with every update with TrueNAS Gal, there's always some app problems because, well, there's little nuances and changes that may cause a problem with the way you have the app configured or specifically just with the app that you're using. The good news is the apps that I'm using haven't had a problem, but I won't dismiss other people's problems just because I don't use Nextcloud. I do know I've seen a few posts in the forums about Nextcloud and uh, Q. BitTorrent. Now the QBitTorrent one's a little puzzling because I run that one and I'm unable to reproduce it, but I'm always using HostPath. And even before when I upgraded to the 23 version, I had noticed that, well, the HostPath seems to work, but people who weren't using HostPath seem to have a problem. And sometimes I just delete the app and reinstall it and then the problems would go away. I didn't have to do that at all with Dragonfish. It seems that all of the systems that I have set up, and we'll cover that later in the video, have been working. But hey, let's dive into why you want to upgrade to this version. Is it time for you to upgrade from TrueNAS Core? Too long, didn't watch. That's a maybe right there. And uh, overall, I would say definitely upgrade to Dragonfish, but let's get started to talk about the cool new features in this version. Are you an individual or forward-thinking company looking for expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Perhaps you're an internal IT team seeking help to proactively manage, monitor, or secure your systems. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific project needs. Whether you require fully managed or co-managed IT services, our experienced team is ready to step in and help. We specialize in supporting businesses that need IT administration or IT teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. To learn more about any of our services, head over to our website and fill out the Hire Us form at lawrencesystems.com. Let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store and affiliate links down below that will lead you to discounts and deals for products and services we discuss on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you really came here for. Now, before I get into the details of the systems I've updated and what apps are running, I wanted to go with over to the change log and show you the couple features that I think are pretty amazing that came out with Dragonfish. Also, I'll leave this link down below so you can read through all of the changes. And the first one I'm going to start with is the new SMB and NFS status pages for active session monitoring administration. This allows you to see the SMB sessions and audit logs to see which systems are connected, the file locks that are in there, which does include this video right here that's being recorded on this system in real time, the shares and the attached systems for those shares, any notifications that are related to this. And we can go back to the SMB shares. We can also go through and see audit logs and we can see that Tom's been authenticating and accessing SMB, and you can see these details right over here. This is a very welcome feature. Related, this is also available under NFS, just under sessions. There's currently not any sessions for NSV3. I have two sessions for NFS version four. Next, I wanna talk about the audit log. So we go here to system settings, audit, and you can see when the logins have occurred. Also some advanced where you can look for a specific event that happened and be able to search and go through these logs. Now under reporting, we have the similar that you've seen before reporting, but we also have this option for net data. And if we click net data, this will open up net data, but not the application installed. This is actually natively installed on the system. The advantage of this is because it's installed at the system level, not as a container, is you're going to be able to see more details because they're fully exposed as opposed to not being able to see certain things that weren't exposed to the container that's going on in the underlying operating system. So we can even get K3 stats for the K3 system running underneath this. We can look at the ZFS cache or even look directly at the network interface information as this goes through. And you can see we're actually writing data to this because I'm recording this on this particular system. So these are the writes that are going on as the video is being recorded. Now, something else I wanna point out is that I did not have to do anything special to get ZFS cache using all of the free memory. Now it releases perfectly fine. So we've got ZFS cache 
holding pretty good here for all the memory it's using. And I have another system I can show this on as well. It has no problems using up all of the cache as needed. It seems to leave just a little bit left over uh, free, but not much. And this is great because before I've done a video on how to set the ZFS cache because the Linux default was previously only 50%. Now it uses pretty much all the memory for cache, which is the ideal situation because the more memory you use for cache, the faster the system will go. Now, the last thing I'm going to show is the improved menus for creating a share. So we'll just call this test share. We're going to choose SMB and we can create the share at the same time. So by doing this all in one step, and we'll go ahead and hit save, that one form was able to not only create the data set, also create the SMB share, set all the permissions. So you have the built-in users, the default built-in administrator all set. You didn't have to do any other steps. And now also if we go to shares, you can see our test share. That is a much simplified way to do this and gonna be really good for new users. Now I wanna talk about the systems I've upgraded and what apps I have running. I have the most running on this particular system and I have these apps running on several others. I have net data installed, but you notice it stopped because they have the built-in net data. So I can probably just go ahead and delete this one right now. You do not have to install net data for the reporting to work and show the net data, but I am running MinIO. I'm running Q, BitTorrent, RSyncD, and SyncThing on this particular system. All of them worked perfectly fine. Now I have noted that people said that they were having some issues with Qubit Torrent. I was in the forums looking at that. One thing I will always note of the way I set up my applications is always with host path. That may be the difference. I did ask the person if they were using host path in one of the forum posts, but that is really to me a critical function is making sure that they're all set up in host path. And the reason for that, and I pointed this out before when I had trouble with sync thing is for some reason, when sometimes I have an update to sync thing that breaks, I just delete it, reinstall it, point it at the same host path where it saves all of the config and it just works. Now, other things that I've tested on here is the data protection and I have numerous snapshot tasks and numerous replication tasks. This goes across all the different systems that I'm using. Uh, that way I have my extra copies here, local and extra copies that are done offsite. I updated this right when the new release came out. So it's been running for several days and I've had no errors at all replicating to all these different machines, including one machine that's still sending it to a true NAS core system. Uh, that's this one here and it's working perfectly fine. Now, this is another system I updated that is a non-IX system. This is just a 45 drive server that has quite a few drives in it and quite a bit of storage. I think we have about uh, 217 terabytes usable on this one. I just reloaded this one a few months ago with the beta and now full release of the TrueNAS Dragonfish, and it's been working quite well. So I've tried this on plenty of systems that are non-IX systems hardware as a, well as a few that are IX systems hardware, and both for me have gone really well. There's less apps running on this one because I only have this as a destination using the MinIO for my Synology backups. That's been working perfectly fine since I switched as well. And this does have a few Windows shares and quite a few NFS shares because this is also a target for some of our lab and some of our production environments as a XCPNG host for storage. So one more thing worth noting is under the virtualization here, if you do have any virtual machines. I just have one Debian system I keep on. I can use it as a jump box for a couple things, but the display, they finally fixed this and it now actually hides your password when you type. This was a bug that showed up in version 23 and is now gone where it could show without putting the little asterisks over your password. So it had this wrong field type attached to it, but hey, that's been fixed. Now, the final question that a lot of people may be thinking is, do I need to move from TrueNAS Core over to TrueNAS Scale? And it depends if you need those applications. As far as the core functionality in terms of SMB and NFS shares, the most common reasons you're going to use this, maybe some iSCSI as well. Those things all seem to work perfectly fine in TrueNAS Scale, and you don't need to use the applications unless you have a need for them. If you have a need for them, well, Core is not going to be the place for application support. I get a lot of people telling me that they're having more trouble with the applications in Core. Yeah, they're just not as well supported. We do have several systems we're going to leave at Core for quite a while because there's not any reason to upgrade because we're using them just for those core functionalities that I mentioned before, and we never need any apps on them. If I were to build a new system today, though, I would do it with scale so I don't have to do the migration because, yes, you can migrate in place for core over to scale. But 
there's not a need to do this now because core is still supported, but it's not going to be getting a lot of new features. But if it has the features you want, then that may be a reason to stay with it until you have to upgrade unless you just, well, are like me and like to upgrade things because why not? As soon as the new update comes out, I like to test it right away and I like to be on the fresh latest and see all the new fancy things that are coming out. This new net data feature, I think is pretty awesome. It gives you a lot of insight in what's going on with the system. You're not going to find that on core, for example, but if you have a core system that's working fine, maybe that's not something you're interested in. Lots of options to weigh out there though. If you're building a new system today, definitely go ahead and start with scale. I would go ahead and start with Dragonfish. The beta of this one went so smooth that the release, I feel could have been even pushed up sooner. It's not like some of the releases that you have where you find quite a few little bugs. I think they had such a massive amount of testing that was done for the beta, then the release candidate. There was a lot of community engagement that helped make this final release, well, really stable, I feel. But nonetheless, love hearing from you. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Leave your opinions on this. If you want to Keep up with what's going on. Head over to lawrencesystems.com and sign up for my newsletter. Also, like and subscribe to see more content from this channel. And I'll see you here on the forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com. Or as of April 1st, 2024, TrueNAS has some new forums, which, uh, hey, you should go ahead and check those out as well. I'll leave a link down there below. You'll find me in there commenting and thinking and reading. I read a lot, probably more than I comment, but I definitely like to help people out there. So, hey, say hi, whichever forums you see me in. Thanks.